Hello, welcome to this video looking at how to improve your sentence structure in your writing. Now, what are teachers really looking for? And I think there's a little bit of a difference between what students think teachers are looking for and what actually teachers are looking for when they're marking your work. Now, these are the things, the big things that teachers are looking for. Sentence structure, paragraphing, your grammar, the structure of your writing, and whether it has a bit of an impact on the reader. The problem is, is that some of those things in that big list on the left are missing. And that's because these things tend to be the most easiest things that people can spot. Can you spell? Have you used some clever words? Have you used some fancy punctuation? Have you written a lot? Is your handwriting neat? And a lot of these things here are all very, very simple things that you can see. And what happens a lot of the time is we focus on these things when actually it's these things that are gonna get you the higher marks. Yes, spelling, vocabulary and punctuation and the amount you write in handwriting are important, but when it comes to judging your writing and seeing how it compares to another student, teachers will be looking at these things. These are the basics and think about these that all writing should have these. These are the basics, but these are the things that you're gonna get the extra marks for. And so we've got to look at how we can improve these things because at the end of the day, these are things that are gonna get you the higher marks. And if we focus on these all the time, we're not gonna address those big things there. Now, we're gonna look at sentence structure. And sentence structure is one of the easy things to fix. And that's why we're focusing on it now, because you can fix your sentence structure today very easily. How can you do that? Well, what the examiner is looking for is to see that you vary your writing. They want to see that it's different, that it changes, that you don't use the same sentence all the time. So what they want to see is you vary the length of sentences. So that might be short sentences and long sentences. They want to see that you change the start of your sentences. So don't start every sentence with the word the or it or this or even the name of a character. They want to see how your sentences link and connect together. And they want to see that you can use different types of sentences. So maybe a question mark, an exclamation mark, or just simple, a sentence, a statement. They also want to look at the structure of your sentences, which we're going to look at today. And they're going to see that you kind of, whether you repeat sentence openings. So these are the things that we need to be thinking about. And we're going to show you a very easy way of how you can address this and fix this very easy. Let's have a look at an example today. So this is really a kind of a bad example of writing. It's punctuated well, there's some good stuff in there. However, when we look at the writing, you can see that we've got lots of sentences that start with the man, the man, it followed, it killed him, he thought, the creature. And you can see that there's lots of repetition in the sentences and they follow the same sort of pattern. And we tend to have something that's doing something at the start of every sentence so it's the man we have a look there and then the next one he did this then the man did this then the person or creature followed he thought this and the creature and it killed him so we've got a lot of repetition in the sentence structure and it doesn't make for very good writing when you compare to see what other students are doing Look at this second paragraph and see what it's doing differently to the first one. Scared, worried, anxious, he knew his time was up. Slowly and menacingly, the creature moved closer. Like a robot, the figure never tired or gave up. It had one thing on its mind, food. If only he had charged his phone that morning, then he could easily call for help. Not only was he trapped, but nobody knew he was there in the forest. Now straight away you can see that this is much better writing and you can see that very simply it's because of the sentence structure. The sentences are structured very very differently and instead of having the, the, the we've got scared, 
slowly, like a robot, it, if, not. So you can see how you can really, really change the writing. Now we're not saying don't start sentences with the, but you can see what this student's got here is the sentence start with lots of the same thing. And that makes for uninteresting writing. And that's what we're looking to try and improve. So if we look at those sentences together and look at them in a different format, you can see that actually there's a variety in length of sentences. You can see that this person has used a colon. We've got a simile. We've got variety. We've got commas. And you can see that this student has got a really good understanding of how to write and it's varied and different. And that's what we've got to think about with our writing. All of us can write. But what we've got to do is make sure our writing is varied and interesting. So what this video is about is learning 12 different sentence structures. And that's what we want you to do. Start with 12 sentences and we'll talk you through them. And we want you to practice and do that at home. Practice, practice, practice. And the thing about it is if you can remember some of the names of the sentences, then it helps you remember when you're writing. You can go, oh, I know what I could do. I could do a colon sentence here or I could do a simile sentence. And it helps you to be better writers because what happens is that bad example is not a student that doesn't know how to write. But what they've done is they've not thought about the sentence structures. And what we need you to do is think about what sentences you're going to use. So this video now is just going to look at some examples of the sentences and they're going to talk to you about how to recreate your own sentences. And the thing is, in English, is that you can copy. You can copy the sentences. And if you have a really good sentence, you can use it again and again. And so this is what we want you to do. Learn these 12 sentences. And what it will do is it will help your writing amazingly. So the first sentence we're going to look at is the abstract noun and an abstract noun is something which you cannot see which you cannot really and here we go dodgy drawing from mr curtis this is supposed to be a hand you cannot touch okay often you can't smell it okay it's something that you cannot physically see or touch and so it tends to be feelings and so you start your sentence with an abstract noun so honor bravery friendship and what that does when you use a sentence like that, what it does is it changes what you're writing about. And often when you're writing a story, what you tend to do is you focus on what things look. And actually, by putting an abstract noun at the beginning, you change the writing because what you're doing then is you're talking about feelings or in the idea here is about big ideas. And so what you do is you lift up your writing. And what you're talking about. The next sentence, a list sentence. Now often when we use lists we tend to use them for shopping or we tend to list what somebody's got in a bag and we don't really use lists in a very clever way and so lists can be an absolutely brilliant thing because the great thing about a list is that you can plonk it anywhere in a sentence so you could put it at the start of a sentence, you could have it in the middle of a sentence, you could have it at the end of the sentence. And in fact, what you could do, and we would avoid doing this all the time, is that you could have a list here, here, and here, all in the same sentence. And the great thing about lists is you could list everything or anything. So for example, here, red, green, blue, and pink colors appeared as the bruise started to form on his leg. So you could use it for colors. In this example here, we've got feelings. And it gives you that extra bit of detail in a sentence. So often what happens is students would write a sentence and go, I felt pain, new sentence. I felt fear, new sentence. I felt anxiety. And really that's pretty clunky writing. By putting it all together in one sentence, it helps it, makes it easier. Now this example at the bottom here, showing you how you can use more than one list and how you can be very, very clever with a list. So you can see here we've got the wind, rain and cold were attacking him. So there's my first list. But then my second list is about the person. And I've got a list of what he's thinking. He wondered what to do. 
thought about his life and hoped for someone to take it all away. So you can see that actually I've got a list of thoughts of the character and what they're thinking in their mind. Now remember when using a list is that we always have a comma to separate the first two items. OK, and then we have another comma if there's more than three items. And then for the last one, we do the and. So just remember that. So that's a list start sentence. Number three is pair of adverb start sentence. And so as you can see here, we've got gently and silently. So a little clue that we've got adverbs. They tend to, not all the time, they tend to end with an L-Y word. And they're an adverb is describing an action. So how did the door close? Gently and silently. And if we have a look here, we've got some examples. So we've got effortlessly and confidently she finished the exam paper. You can see that these two are describing how she finished. Now the great thing about this is it puts the focus on the action rather than description. And it's giving us an understanding about a bit more about the character. And we can kind of feel that maybe this person's a little bit smug about what they're doing. Now, I want you to remember the structure that you've got there because you can see, as I've highlighted in red, that we've got two adverbs followed by a comma, and then we've got our main sentence. And that's the thing, okay? So this could make sense on its own, couldn't it? But we put this at the beginning, making sure that it links into that, into what we're talking about. And do think about your adverbs that you use. Often people use quite simple and easy. So they go, things happen quickly, slowly. Think about what words you could use for your adverbs. So that is a pair of adverb start sentence. Next one, really, really easy. Often students put a simile in the middle of a sentence. And actually, you can start at the beginning and actually gets your reader thinking about an image straight away. So like here, like an aftermath of an explosion, the boy's room was covered with mess. Here we've got, like the first day of school, he was only bothered about making a good impression. Like a ghost, she moved unnoticed and invisible. Now, look at the structure there. We start with the word like, we have our simile. And remember, a simile is comparing one thing to another. And then we have our main sentence there. The next one, the colon to introduce something. Now, this is one of my favorite sentences. Love it. OK, and it's really, really easy sentence. OK, now a colon, people tend to put complex punctuation like colons and semicolons. They like to chuck him into a sentence. And actually, we're going to use it for effect. That's what this sentence is about. And it's building up to something. So if we have a look, the boy was shocked by the thing on the other side of the door. OK, straight away, you're probably thinking, what's the other thing on the side of the door? And it's almost like we're putting an ellipsis here. Dun, dun, dun. It's the ghost of the dead friend. Instead, we're putting him on the side. We're getting rid of one of those dots and making it a colon. So you're building up. It's like a dramatic pause that we've got there. Like this one here. Today was the day it would all change for him. Dun, dun, dun. The day he died. And you can see that there's a big dramatic pause there. Next one, there was only one thing on his mind. Dun, 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 pizza. All right, so really, really straightforward. But you've got to be clear that your sentence here has got to have a kind of a bit of a, a mystery. And then what you do after the colon is introduce the mystery. So that was the colon to introduce something. OK, next one, conditional sentence. Now, conditional sentences are great, really, really simple sentences. OK, and you can see the structure. All you've got to do is have an if and a then. That's all you need to do, because what you're doing is going if this happened. So what action? What would be the consequence? So here, if he opened the door, then his life was over. If this was the end, then he wanted it to be the best he could be. 
And so that's the conditional sentence. If action, then consequence. And number eight is the verb start sentence. So it's very similar to other sentences that we've got where we've got our main sentence that's here. And then we've got a phrase that starts with a verb at the beginning. OK, and as you can see here, running in pure panic, the boy entered the woods. And you can see that we've got some examples here. Hoping to be rescued, comma, he waved his arms like a madman. Feeling lost. He didn't know what to do. So you can see that you've got to have this phrase at the beginning that starts with a verb, a comma, and then you've got your main sentence there to follow on. Now, the next sentence is good because it kind of adds a lot more detail. So it's the not only but sentence. So not only was the place empty, but there was a layer of dust on everything. And this is really good because it kind of like combines two different sentences. So what you're doing is you say it was quiet and it was also cold. But you kind of add a bit more detail. So not only was it cold, quiet, but it was also cold. And you can see that what you do is you just copy the bit here in the sentence and you say something. So not only was she tired, but she was hungry. So you can see it's the but and the not only that you need to repeat. And again, we're changing how we start our sentences so we don't start with the or it. So the not only but sentence. Number 10, okay, now a bit like the simile sentence is often what happens with personification and similes is people tend to put them in the middle of a sentence. And actually, you can start it a sentence with using personification. And so, for example, a lot of the time, students, when they're writing sentences, they go, um, the, the green cars swam across the road. And what you can is you can just get rid of all that stuff beforehand and just say cars. So cars swam across the road. And you can see how you've got the personification, which is swam. OK, and then you've got the rest of the sentence. So here we've got example, we've got sunlight and waves. So those are our nouns that are doing the stuff. And you can see, and this is where you've got to be really, really thoughtful about your choice of words. But think about a verb, because really a lot of the time your personification happens with your verbs. So if you just make sure that you think about the verb that you use and make sure that the verb is something that only something humans would do. So like tickling and attacking is the sort of thing that humans would do. And straight away, really simply, you've got personification. So a noun followed by a personification verb. And that's really a verb that humans would do. So. OK, now this is an interesting sentence and it's one that will help develop and expand your writing because you can use it in a number of different ways now what i've done here is i've given you the basic one the closer the closer sentence the closer i got the closer i was to death and so you can see in that sentence we've got the closer and then we've got this comma and then the closer something else and so we've got these two bits of a sentence that closely link together that they can't really be be on their own you need both of them together. So what you can do is you can do like this one here. You can go the closer he looked, the closer he got to the truth. Or what you can do is you can use another phrase, which is the more. So the more he worried or the more he couldn't concentrate. And so you can see it's got a very similar sort of thing. Now, one of the things that you can use is using comparative adjectives to do this. Um, and so, for example, using ER words. OK, so you could say like uh, the louder, okay, the louder he got, um, the louder um, the rest of the group started talking. So you can use that, so using an ER word to kind of expand on things. And we call those comparative adjectives usually. So that's what you can do in there. So it's a very simple sentence. You can use either the closer or the more, or you could use a word of your own choice. So that's the closer, closer sentence. Okay, finally, the last sentence that we've got is this. 
it's the two adjective start sentence. So a bit like your two adverbs, instead of this time, what we're using is we're using adjectives to describe something. So this is a little bit different. So instead, what we're doing is we're talking about the subject of the sentence. So here, dark and lifeless is the room. OK, so whereas before the adverbs, we're talking about the action. This is now a more descriptive sentence by starting off with dark and lifeless. So we've got lonely and sad. He didn't know what to do. So lonely and sad is describing him, isn't it? Cold and low, cold and quiet. He waited for someone to notice him on the field. And so you can see that we're building up that picture. And it's really, really simple. Just make sure your two adjectives are used. Try and think if they try and make them link in some way. So try and make them link and so you can connect them together. And you can see, actually, when we've got these sentences together, we can kind of explain it a little bit more. We can go, oh, it's cold and quiet. He waited. Well, why is he waiting if he's cold and quiet? And you can see here because of somebody to notice him on the field. So we're really kind of building up the picture as we go along. So he was cold and quiet. He waited. Why? because somebody was he's waiting for somebody to notice him on the field. So we're just adding that little bit more detail to the sentence there. So these are all the sentences that we want you to remember. So try, first of all, try and remember the name. OK, try and remember the name and remember the way that the sentence is structured. So, for example, when it comes to writing, and when you're asked to do a bit of writing, then you've got a few more tools in your kit to use when you're writing. And I'm not saying that every piece of writing needs to have all of these sentences, but if you can use some of them, then it's going to make your writing much better. Check out the YouTube channel because there are videos, more videos on there, and we will add more videos as we go along. Thank you.